Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to select subjects in a single click inside of Photoshop and no, it is not the magic wand tool. Something that's been in Adobe products for a while and is starting to do more and more things is Adobe Sensei. A Sensei is machine learning or otherwise known as AI. Um, it's actually in the up res now. When we up res a file inside of Photoshop, it actually uses that AI to reproduce that image in a larger size and it actually reduces artifacts and creates better enlargements. But now it's coming to one of the key areas inside of Photoshop that people love, um, people struggle with, and that is selections. So I'm going to show you a couple of things with selections. I'm going to show you how to make a selection in a single click, like literally without even touching the canvas. And then I'm going to show you how to refine those selections a little bit. And then there's another little thing that's been added into the selection area that people are really not talking about. And I'm going to show you that. And that's going to help you to get much more magical edges. All right, so let's jump in right now and start by just testing this out. So the first thing is if we go down to the selection tool, we get to choose a quick select brush. This is where we're going to go here. You should see this option that says select subject. Now, if you don't see this, and you're on CC, just go into your Creative Cloud up here, and that would be down there on Windows, and just run an update. If you see the app there for Photoshop, run the update. If you don't, you can actually go into the menu, and you can choose to check for updates and force that update to happen. So you want to do that first. Now, if you're using Photoshop CS6, I'm sorry, but this feature is not available. So this is only for Photoshop CC users. So um, check out some of my other great tutorials on making selections that work inside of Photoshop CS6, if that's you. So moving along, why don't we test this out a little bit? Now, the first thing I just want to let you know is these selections are not going to be perfect off the bat. There's things we need to do, but first we're going to test it, and then I'm going to show you ways to refine it. So all we need to do is just choose Select Subject. And we've got this kitten here, and give it a second, and boom, look at that. It made a selection around there. Now we could go into select a mask and refine that, but you know, okay, let's just, that's fine for now. But this is just a subject against a white background. Why don't we start with this group first and see if we can do multiple people against a white background. You know the answer to that. It's, of course it's gonna do it. So we're just gonna do that right now. And it's gonna make that quick selection. Now there's a lot of things we can do with selections. You know, we obviously use them for cutting out, but we also use them for masking, for applying special effects and a lot of different things. Background blurs, all these kind of things, we're gonna be doing selections. Now notice it doesn't pick up the contiguous areas. Well, it did down there. And some of these, you know, you might just wanna grab your quick select tool and then just paint in here to pick up some of those other areas. Why don't we have a look at this one? I've actually used this in a, another tutorial um, let me just choose select subject right now and see how this works. So we've got, you know, a little bit more going on here and look at that. There's a nice selection around there. Let's do this one here. So we've got a lot going on here. How does it know what the subject is? Well, this is kind of how the AI works. It actually recognizes it as a person or as a car, or a tree, an animal, whatever. And I'm going to prove that right now by choosing the select subject. And it's going to look in here. The woman obviously is the subject. And yep, look at that, it picked her up perfectly. Okay, so what about other things? Like trees, is this gonna work on a tree? Let's turn it on and try it. Yep, there we go. Now obviously, you know, we've gotta go in here and do things with the tree, but what you can do for a selection like this is you can expand it, and then it gets rid of all the background element, and then you can do a more refined selection using other techniques. You know, by using this to get started, it's a huge time saver. So we've got a bit more of a complicated background now. So notice that this, a lot of the background colors are kind of similar to what's the foreground. We're not just working on simple backgrounds anymore. And we're going to choose this and see if it recognizes that this is a woman person. And yep, there we go. And this is a more complex image. So obviously there's going to be little bits that are missing. So we can add to it by using the quick select brush. Make sure it's set to the plus there. And then we get some areas that got missed, you know, like in here. And to be honest, we're not going to get a perfect selection against this grass. We would have to actually make a grass brush and paint over it. But this is fine. This will get us uh, where we want to go. We missed a little bit here too. And notice I'm using the worst selection out of all these examples to show you how we can clean it up because I want this to be real world. All right, so we've basically, you know, kind of picked up her edge here. And, you know, obviously the hair needs some work. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose Select and Mask. We're going to go into that workspace. Now, the first thing I always do is I turn on Show Edge and then turn the radius up. Now, this is all you need to do for a lot of selections 
to actually get a good selection. So let's go up a little bit more until we see a nice kind of outline around there. Turn off that show edge and you'll notice that these areas are much, much cleaner than they were before. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're grabbing this masking tool here. I'm going to increase the size and we're just going to go around here. hair. So let's go around here, hair, just kind of picking that up. If you can't see where the hair is, that's what the transparency slider is for. We can take this down a little bit and we can see, ah, look at this. There's hair there. Let's paint over that. Make sure we get it all. And we're just kind of playing around with it there. And make sure we go over that edge to include it. And that should help expand into the hair a little bit better. And now if we play around with our transparency, we can see we kind of sort of getting in there. Let's do a little bit more. And we can turn that up. Now, if you're having trouble with this picking up that hairy area like we are there, let's check it first against black because it might not be as bad as we think. And let's change our preview. You yeah, see, it's not as bad as what we thought, but what we can do is we can force it by choosing this one. And let's force that to be included. Let's paint that in there. And let's just force all of this in here. Now this will do something really big. Now when we go back to this tool, it now knows that, hey, we want to include this color because we've just actually isolated it by forcing it with the other brush. See that, of course, on the other side there. Let's just go around the edge of that here. And obviously there's things we could do to make it better. But we can see what we're doing right now. It's not looking too bad. Now I'm going to go back to the transparency or the onion skin here and I'm going to show you the other setting that I talked about. Let's turn that all the way up. So if we're looking in here, if there's areas like this that look a little weird, you know, just want to force those in there. There we go. Let's just go in there, force these areas to be included. Nice. Okay, so look at this. We've got this kind of fringing around the edge, the color fringing. So another new feature that was dropped in the update here is decontaminate colors. Okay, this has always been here. See how I turn that on? What it does is it cleans up some of that color fringing, but sometimes it goes too much and it removes too much of the subject. So if we could slide this all the way down here and we can see it's not being affected as much now. It's still affecting it a little bit, but not as much, even at zero. But let's pull it up just a little bit. And maybe to about there. And see how now we can balance it where we're getting rid of the coloring on the edges, but we're also keeping more of our subjects. So if we can click in here and we go new layer with layer mask. Okay, and there we go. We've got our selection cut out and we could just drop it into another image to just kind of see how it looks. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect just yet, but all right. And there you go. I'm just kind of dropping that in there quickly just to kind of show you how it works. Now, there's other techniques we could do to further refine those selections, but that's not bad just for the amount of time that I spent on it so far. So anyway, what do you guys think? Do you like the way Photoshop's going with these selection tools? Do you think it's making it easier for you? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Drop a comment. And by the way, guys, if you like this tutorial, smash that like button into dust. If you like Photoshop tutorials and you'd like to get lots more of them, hit that subscribe button right now and that little notification bell. I've actually heard from a few people that said, you know, I've been watching your videos for a long time. I'm embarrassed. I didn't realize I hadn't subscribed yet. Uh, that's the subscribe button right there on YouTube. If that's you, hit it right now and you'll get a notification whenever I upload a new tutorial, which is at least once a week. Lately, it's been three times a week. Anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.